Hey there, welcome or welcome back. My name is Emily and I share art videos with you guys over here on my channel. Today we're going to talk about a couple of the things I learned during my time at art school. I'm going to tell you how I was taught to see values and to understand the value scale through doing studies and paintings with a simple five value scale using only ivory black and titanium white on the palette. We're also going to later touch on the grisaille technique, which is a technique in oils that brings color into a black and white painting. So one of the very first things I had to do in art school was to copy a five value scale. I'm gonna put one on the screen and you can pause it if you want, but I definitely recommend grabbing a ivory black and a titanium white. This can be in oils or acrylics and try mixing these values yourself. It's not the most exciting thing to do, but I think it's a great idea, especially if you are teaching yourself how to paint. So what you'll see me working on in this video is just a simple five value portrait study. I took a reference and I got rid of all of the color. I made it black and white and I actually blurred the image a little bit to get rid of all of the distracting information and the tiny value shifts. And this just leaves you with a greater idea, I guess, of the large shadow shapes and the larger light shapes. It's a lot easier to work from this reference than a perfectly in focus colored image. There's just a lot of visual information that isn't really necessary for this study. I do look at a unblurred black and white version later on just to get a few little details, especially around the eyes and the nose area, but I try and hold off for as long as possible because the goal of this painting is just to focus on the shape and value relations. This is also why you'll see me using quite a large flat brush for the majority of the painting. You're going to want to use a brush a little bit bigger than you think you need and you're going to want to use this for a little bit longer than you think you should use it for. This way you are less likely to get distracted on the tiny unnecessary details and you will stay focused on the image as a whole. I started with just a very basic uh, washi sketch in of the portrait and then I went in with the darkest areas. Uh, for me, this was in the hair on either side of the head and then a little bit on the top of the head. And then I went in to my darkest gray color to get all of the major shadow shapes. I'm treating the background of this portrait in the same way that I'm treating the portrait itself. It is all shapes, both positive and negative. And I'm really trying not to think about this as a face. I'm just thinking about it as shapes and how they differ from, you know, the shape next to it. So after I got that dark gray in, I went back in with some black to reestablish some of the darker areas. Next, you'll see me go into the middle value of this study. It's sort of a medium gray. And then I will go into the light gray and very, very finally I will go into white, but being very sparing with the white. In my painting courses, we spent an entire semester painting completely in black and white. This was so that we could get used to painting and also start to understand value. Color can be very distracting for someone learning to paint. Color definitely adds something wonderful to a painting, but if you don't have your value and shape relations right, it probably won't look great. This is something that happens to me all the time and it is one of the biggest battles you will face while painting. <laughs> A good example of this is actually right here. If you look at the eye on the right, 
I have the shape completely wrong and because of that the whole portrait looks off. If you watch, I will slowly fix it. I am basically just getting that upper lid shape right. You wouldn't believe how such a simple little thing can change the whole appearance of a portrait. After you have a blocked in portrait with five values, it can look really ugly, really chunky, but that's okay. Now you can leave it like this if you feel like you've learned something or if you want to have a little bit of a nicer portrait, you can go in and work on some smaller value shifts. And you can also work on edges, so we maybe don't want all of these edges to be so blocky and harsh. So you can go in and soften the edges that need to be softened. You can add those sort of values that are in between <laughs> those major five. Say we have a mid-tone gray and a light gray next to each other. Maybe you want to throw in a gray that would, you know, sit between those in a value scale just on that line. And that will, that will make, say, that cheek look a little bit softer, a little more natural. I originally intended this video to be entirely about value studies, but I later decided to try doing a grisaille. I thought I would add a little pizzazz to this painting and bring in some color. So what I did is I took a picture of my painting and brought it into Procreate on my iPad and then I had a little bit of fun playing around with what colors I could add to the portrait. I at first thought I might just do a wash over the whole painting, just one color, just to make it a little more fun than just the black and white, but I ended up settling on uh, using multiple colors, bringing in some pink in the cheeks and the nose, and then also bringing in some, you know, yellows, purples, and greens. Now this is an oil technique I haven't done since art university, but it really isn't that complicated. Basically, you do a black and white painting like this or a value study like this, and then you go in with glazes of color after the initial painting is dried. And a glaze is basically where you take your pigment, you take your oil paint, and you mix it with a fair amount of oil. Way more oil than you would use during a normal painting. You're basically making a more transparent version of your hue or your color and you're just applying this on top of the black and white painting. You're letting the value show through. And this is a great technique because it's a lot easier to get your values right when you're working in black and white than it is when you're working in color. This isn't a technique I usually like to use because I do think of myself as a a la prima painter which is a oil painter that paints all in one sitting usually. I really like the look of a wet on wet painting. That being said, I did really enjoy this process. It reminded me a lot of the way in which old black and white photographs used to be hand painted and colored. This was done using a substance called photo oils. Uh, so I imagine it felt very similar to this though on a much, much smaller scale. So this process involved a lot of coloring in and then wiping out. I went into the darkest areas with a little bit of a warmer color to bring out those shadows and to make them feel a little more deep. So I actually received a bachelor's in fine arts, a BFA, and my major was in drawing and painting. And even though I really enjoyed my time at school, um, I really, really enjoyed it. I had such a blast. 
I still 100% believe it is not something that is necessary for a successful artist. There are so many amazing self-taught artists, though it is definitely a more difficult task to undertake uh, teaching yourself. I might make this a series, if anyone is interested, uh, where I share some of the things I learned during my time at school because there are quite a few things that really stand out to me as, you know, moments where I noticed a shift in my art directly related to something I learned at school. I might even share some of the things that I learned and have since had to unlearn from art school because there are a few of those. You do hear a lot of contradictory information and techniques in art school. But that might be a whole other topic for another video. Definitely let me know if you are interested in a series like that or even just a video where I talk about my experiences. If you've made it this far into the video, first of all, thank you so much. But also, I would love to know if you are working on anything art related at the moment. I would love to hear about it. So that is pretty much it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed and if you did, you can feel free to leave it a like and if you are interested in watching more art videos like this one, feel free to subscribe because there will be more very very soon. Have a great one. Bye.